Hey there, and welcome to uh, a deep dive. All about ah. corporate social responsibility. Yes, CSR, as the cool kids call it. That's right. And how it really affects people like you. And we are talking about the nitty gritty here. Not just like how CSR impacts a company's profits, but like the actual human side of things. Right, because at the end of the day, it's people making the decisions, feeling the effects right. Exactly. So to get into all of this. We've got an excerpt from a 2024 review article in Nature Human Behavior titled, Corporate Social Responsibility and Individual Behavior. Okay. And let me tell you, this isn't just some dry academic paper. It's got some juicy insights. I believe it. Are you ready to unpack this? I'm ready. Okay, so first things first. This whole CSR thing. Yeah. Isn't that exactly a new concept, right? You're telling me. The first book dedicated to CSR was published way back in 1953. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? 1953. Back then, a company doing good probably meant like donating to the local library or something. Right. Not exactly tackling climate change or fighting for social justice. Exactly. And the way researchers even defined CSR back then was much more vague. But fast forward to today. The 2000s globalization, the internet. Like a whole new ball game? Yeah. Companies are realizing they're not just responsible to their shareholders anymore. They've got stakeholders to think about. Okay, so explain that. What's the difference between a shareholder and a stakeholder? So a shareholder, they own a piece of the company, right? Right. They're primarily interested in profits. But a stakeholder, that's anyone who's impacted by the company's actions, whether it's employees, customers, the community, even the environment. So like if I buy a t-shirt. And that company uses child labor to make it. I'm a stakeholder even if I don't realize it. Exactly. And that's where things get interesting because CSR today is less about just looking good and more about taking actual responsibility for your impact on all these different stakeholders. Which is where this 2011 definition of CSR comes in that the researchers used for this review. Yeah. Yes. They pulled it from a psychology handbook. Which makes sense, since we're all about the human behavior aspect here. Right. This definition is great because it emphasizes context-specific actions and the triple bottom line. Let's break that down. Context-specific actions. Yeah. What does that even mean? It means that what counts as responsible behavior depends on the specific situation, the industry, the stakeholders involved. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Okay, so it's not just about checking boxes. It's about doing what's actually appropriate and meaningful in a particular context. Right. And the triple bottom line, remind me what that is again. Right, so you've got your traditional bottom line, which is all about profits, right? Right. But the triple bottom line adds two more, people and the planet. So it's about considering the economic, social, and environmental impact of your actions. It's like, sure, a company can make a profit. But are they treating their employees fairly? Are they minimizing their environmental impact? It's about finding that balance, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's where things can get tricky for companies because they only have so many resources. You know, it's like when a company says, oh, we're going to donate all this money to uh. like plant a million trees. Exactly. And it's like, that's great and all. Yeah. But what about the people? Right. Are you paying? Working for your ass. Are you paying them? Are you yeah. making sure that they're treating them fairly? Taking care of exactly. Right. So it's this weird It's such a it's such a tough thing. Yeah. Because like I said, like you know, you only have so many resources as a company. Right. So if you're putting all of your money towards one Towards one thing. You know, it's like, are you yeah. taking it away from something else? Exactly. And how do you... That's a balance. Yeah. How do you find that balance? It's so hard. Because like you were saying, sometimes yeah. CSR can actually be good for profits. Right. So it's not always this like yeah. zero sum game. Exactly. It's not like, oh, we spend money on this and then it's gone. Right. right. Like if you invest in your employees, mm -hmm. if you invest in sustainability efforts, yeah, sometimes that can actually make you more money in the long run. Totally. And the, and that's something that they talk about in this review too is like, right. if you have employees who are really motivated and they feel good about yeah. the company they work for. Who they work for the company's value. They're much more likely to come up with those innovative ideas right. that are actually going to boost yeah. profits. It's that whole in intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation thing, yeah, right? Totally. Where it's like if people actually believe in what you're doing, right. they're going to work harder. But they're going to you're going to go above and beyond. Be more engaged. Absolutely. Right, and that's yeah. that's huge. And so that's Thank God. kind of where this model comes in okay. that the researchers are proposing because oh. they're saying, okay, yeah. we need to understand how individuals are perceiving these efforts, yes. how they're feeling about them, and then what they're actually doing as yeah. a result. I love it. Yeah. Perceptions, attitudes, behaviors. Exactly. 
dig it. Let's break it down. So we've talked about how people see these CSR efforts, how they feel about them. Right. But like you said, it all comes down to, yeah. okay, what are people actually doing differently? Exactly. Are they actually changing their behavior because of this? That is the question, right? Right. Because you could say, oh, yeah, I really care about sustainability. Right. I only buy from ethical brands. Mm. But when you're actually at the store. Right. And that, like, you know, whatever it is. That T-shirt is, like, three times the price. Exactly. Are you really going really to <laughs> fork over the extra cash? Are you going to walk the walk? Right. Exactly. And that's, I think. Because it's one thing to talk the talk. Mm -hmm. It's another to actually. Yeah back it up with your actions and this is where this whole idea of like yeah. csr readiness comes in right yes absolutely where it's like how predisposed are we mm. to actually care about this stuff right right to actually let it influence our behavior are we naturally inclined to be like oh yeah social responsibility let's go <laughs> right exactly or are we a little bit more like yeah yeah like prove it yeah, like what's in it for me kind of thing. Right. And and so that's something that they, they really dig into in this review is like okay. how much of it is about the individual mm -hmm. versus how much of it is about the, the environment. Person. Right. Because like you were saying, even if I'm not like yeah, yeah. a huge environmental activist, right. if I'm working at a company that's like all about sustainability, yes. if they're constantly giving me opportunities to like exactly. recycle to volunteer. Yeah. Are there incentives? To reduce my carbon footprint? To behave in those ways, right? Yeah. Am I surrounded by other people who are doing that? Exactly. And that's where... It's going to probably rub off on me a little bit. Totally. Uh, it's like social norms. It's like if everyone around you is doing it, yeah. you're more likely to do it too. Right. Exactly. So it's like this interplay between yeah, exactly. who we are yeah. and the environment that we're in. I love that. Yeah. It's not just about the individual. It's about the system. Right. It's about the system exactly. It's like they're in. And that's where like this whole future research agenda comes in, right? Okay. Because they're saying we need to understand this better. We need to understand it way better. We're like how do we actually shift mm -hmm. not just what companies are doing, but like how do we shift yeah. individual behavior? How do we get people on board? Yeah. How do we make this stuff like actually matter to people? And that's what I think is so cool about this push for yeah. using things like virtual reality to study this. Yes. Because it's one thing to like ask someone on a survey. Right. Like, oh, how important is sustainability to you? Right, you're going to buy the ethically sourced coffee. Right, exactly. But it's another thing to like cool. put them in a simulation. Put them in a situation, right. Where they have to actually make those decisions. Where it's like, okay, now you're the CEO. Right. What are you going to do? you got these stakeholders breathing down your neck. Exactly. And you got to make a choice. What are you going to do? Yeah. That's so cool. And I think that's like... I know. It's such a cool area of research. It's such a cool Because it's like... Some tier. It's the future of this kind of stuff. Yeah. And imagine like the implications for not just like companies, yeah. but for like policymakers. For... Oh my gosh. Educate everyone. Educators for everyone, right? It, like it touches everything. If we can figure out how to like actually motivate people, yes, to behave in more responsible ways, it's a game changer. That's huge. It's huge. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our. I think so. Deep dive. Deep dive for today, yes. but the conversation doesn't have to end here. Please continue this conversation. What? We want to hear from you. Tell us what you think. Head over to our website. Let us know. Or our social media channels. Yes. Share your thoughts. Yes. Keep the conversation going. Keep diving deep. And until next time. Happy diving, everyone. <laughs>